spoilers for Chainsaw Man up ahead. Obviously, the anime isn't even out yet. Okay, video time. So this video is actually kinda special to me, because a while ago, I already made a video on Makima's powers. In fact, it's the second video on this channel. It was a little theory video based on what we'd seen at that point in the series, trying to figure out how her powers worked. However, then those powers got explained, with a lot of stuff I said in it being quickly proven wrong. So yeah, please don't watch that video. It's really outdated and honestly pretty bad in terms of production value. In fact, the reason I'm even making this video is because people keep watching that fucking video. And I keep getting people going into the comments section trying to explain to me how her powers work. Like, yes, I know that she can control people that she sees as less than herself. I read the manga. Look at the date on the goddamn video. I didn't know at the time. <sighs> so, yeah, I want to revisit this topic now in the format of my Power Profile series instead of as a theory video, because we do have a lot more information now in the present day. Now I'm finally going to do a proper power scaling video on one of the most infamous villains of modern shonen. So how strong is the control devil? How strong is Makima? As per usual, let's start with her physical strength. Despite her reliance on devil powers and hacks, Makima is a decent physical brawler. Not as strong as some of the powerhouses in the series, but she's no slouch either. Obviously, she's able to tear through normal humans like she presumably did on the train in Chapter 26, but she also does similar damage to the duplicate body that Denji created in their fight. Or was this Pochita fighting? I've heard some say this is straight up Pochita. I don't know though, so I'm just gonna refer to this entity as the Denji clone for this video as a whole. So let's assume that the Denji clone was at least as strong as Denji's normal transformed self. In fact, you could argue it's even stronger since the transformation covering its arms could indicate greater overall power. But how durable is Denji? Well, in the Bat Devil arc, he takes a sonic attack from the titular Devil, an attack that obliterates part of the building behind him. In terms of exact power, I have linked a calc in the description below that places the attack from around 0.4 tons to 7.4 tons in attack potency. Now that attack left Denji with some broken bones, like this busted up finger, but Makima's punches? They tear right through him like tissue paper, meaning her physical power is is at least higher than Denji's own durability. As for Makima's speed, we don't have a lot of feats or info to use, but the info we do have is mostly straightforward. The best we can say for her is that she is relative to Denji, or rather, she is relative to the Denji clone thing. After all, when they fought, they were both getting good shots in. We also know that Makima is probably not faster than bullets. She kinda gets shot. A lot. Like, yeah, the first time was to the back of the head, solid excuse, but what about Kishibe's squad? The only excuse she has there is being minorly surprised. However, this slowness ultimately makes sense. She doesn't really have any supersonic feats anyway. The best we can really say is that she is probably somewhat relative to Denji. So how fast is Denji? Well, not that fast, really. I mean, he's probably faster than your average human. He's implied to be able to keep up with Kishibe in base form, and Kishibe is abnormally strong, even without the use of devil contracts. But Denji also isn't that fast. Like, sure, he was able to beat Katana Man and Riz, who have much greater speed. But he never really beats them by outspeeding them, or even matching their speed. He gets tricky and outplays them, catching them off guard. So with all of this taken into account, the best we can really argue is that his and Makima's speed is somewhere between peak human and sonic speed. Makima's durability is also pretty straightforward. She is not very durable at all. She really doesn't have many durability feats, but she has a ton of anti-feats. Like sure, I expect the gun devil and the darkness devil to be able to hurt her, that just makes sense. But normal bullets go right through her. She gets hurt and dies a lot. The story makes a point of how many times she dies. 
Really, the best we can say in her favor is that she is probably able to take the force of her own punches, given the fact that her hands don't break on impact. So for this video, I'm just gonna say that her durability is equivalent to or greater than her own physical strength. This all being said, let's not make it sound like Makima is just some kind of boxer and that's all she has going for her. That's not even her main shtick. Makima has other powers, alongside the devils, that allow her to use a host of crazy abilities. It's hard to go in depth for all of the abilities that she displays through her control of other devils, since there is a lot of ambiguity involved, but I guess we can run through them. In Chapter 27, she uses an ability to crush multiple people. We don't even know how she does this, like is this her ability or is she using an unknown devil? We do know some stuff about it though, she seems to take a sacrifice make them say their name, which she does with her control powers by the way, and then she puts her hands together in some form. There also seems to be the unexplained factor of higher altitude translating to effectiveness, but I don't know how scaling this would work. We only see her use it to crush humans, which isn't very impressive in terms of output. Although this ability isn't very practical for a fight anyway, so I guess that's a moot point. Another ability she uses is being able to cause internal damage in others, like when she makes someone bleed from their eyes, nose, and mouth without any sign of external injury. Again, I don't know how strong this is, but she also does this to the fucking Darkness Devil, who is way more powerful than her. Unquantifiably more powerful. So does that mean this ability is well above her actual power, or is there some kind of durability negation involved here? Like, can this hurt people regardless of how tough they are at all? Again, we don't know. Another strange ability is her use of animals like rats. Like sure, her ability to listen through lesser animals is probably an extension of her control devil powers, but I don't really know how she fucking teleports with rats or does some kind of transportation with them. In terms of devils we know she has under her control in her last fights, she has the Punishment Devil with unknown abilities, the Future Devil which let Aki see a few seconds into the future, the Snake Devil which can eat and release other devils to fight for it, the Zombie Devil which can turn people into zombies that can turn other people into zombies, and the Angel Devil which steals lifespan at a touch and can turn that lifespan into weapons. The most interesting of these powers is the Angel Devil. With a short touch of hands, Aki lost two months of his life, meaning any kind of prolonged contact would likely kill an opponent. Then you have his weapon creation, with five years used to take out some human dolls, ten years presumably being strong enough to harm Makima since she actively avoided the attack, one hundred years which Makima thought was strong enough to harm an empowered blood devil, and a thousand years being enough to harm an unquantifiably weaker chainsaw man. There's also the fact that these weapons have weird hacks abilities, like Aki's sword being able to negate spiritual intangibility, but we have no idea what the extent of that really is. Is. There has to be some kind of limit, but we're never really told what it is. Makima also has the weapon devils at her disposal. We don't have all of their confirmed names, nor do we have feats for all of them, however we do have some stuff. They should all have the same method of increasing their speed to at least faster than eye levels, like Riz with her explosions. I have seen some people calculate Quan Chi's speed feat when she kills a bunch of people to supersonic or hypersonic levels, that really depends on how you interpret the feat though. In terms of power though, we do have Ryu's and Katana Man all being able to heavily damage Denji, placing them in the several ton range of attack potency like Makima herself. Aside from that though, we don't have much on the Weapon Devil hybrid's full capabilities. Now with all of that out of the way, I would like to lastly go over what is easily her most recognizable attack, which is her finger gun attack. Something I will refer to as finger bangs for the sake of simplicity. Her finger bangs are presumably much stronger than her physical punches as they were able to rip through a powered up blood devil. In fact, power in this state was so strong that Makima was seemingly no longer able to exert control over her. I think what's happening here is Power's display of strength made it so Makima wasn't able to see Power as lesser than herself anymore. But how powerful are these finger bangs? 
While we don't really have any great feats that explicitly show their power in a quantifiable way, however we do have some nice narrative tools to show the disparity in power. Remember those weapons the Angel Devil can make? Well, Fujimoto seems to be telling us with these weapons how powerful certain characters are compared to each other. The Angel Fiend felt that 10 years was enough to damage Makima and she actively avoided this attack. Later, Makima creates a weapon of 100 years lifespan against the Empowered Blood Devil with the idea in mind that this would be enough to sufficiently damage her. From this, it seems that we are being told that this version of power is roughly 10 times stronger than Makima in terms of physical toughness. And since Makima's finger banks could sufficiently damage this version of power, then these finger banks are also roughly 10 times greater in power than her own physical strength. Again, going with the assumption that Makima's durability is relative to her own physical power. I know that this is a little convoluted, but this seems to be the narrative portrayal that we're being given. And with a lack of outright feats, I think it's the best we have. But with all of that gone over, what kind of conclusions can we come to? Well, in terms of physical power, I mentioned how it has been calced that Denji was able to take a blast that ripped through a building directly, a blast that likely has somewhere between half a ton and seven tons of force. Since Makima was able to punch through his duplicate with ease, I'm gonna place her bare minimum striking strength at around seven tons. As for durability, I would argue the same. Like I said before, her durability should bare minimum match her striking power, and that's about all we have. As for speed, the best I could really give Makima is a combat speed upwards of maybe 60 meters per second. I know that's pretty low, but hear me out. I'm just talking about her own physical combat speed. As discussed, some of the devils she controls are far faster. That's just a fact. But in terms of her own speed, she's kinda featless. The best we have for her is decapitating a base form Quan Chi and fighting evenly with the Denji duplicate. If you personally want to argue for faster than I speed, go for it. I'm just giving what I think is a reasonable minimum. Where things get interesting with Makima are her various abilities she has from her own powers and the powers of other devils. From her own power, her finger bangs probably generate upwards of 70 tons, as like I said, around 10 times her own strength. She has possible durability negation with her internal attacks, although that's unconfirmed. Then there's that weird ritual thing to kill people from afar. Then with her controlled abilities, she can absorb beings to fight for her, see a few seconds into the future, create zombies, and she can make weapons that are capable of harming her or weapons presumably 100 times stronger than that. And probably even more weapons that are stronger than even that. Then we have the Weapon Devils, which are capable of producing greater power and speed than Makima's own body with a variety of damage forms, from cutting and piercing attacks to explosive and fiery attacks. Oh yeah, and I also went this entire video without even mentioning the fact that all attacks against her are transferred to a Japanese citizen. And Japan, as of 1997 when the series takes place, had over 126 million people living in it. So even if she does have pretty garbage durability compared to others, it doesn't really matter since conventional forms of damage are pretty much useless against her. And that's the video. I think I somehow managed to cover everything. Holy shit, does she do a ton of stuff in the course of over 90 chapters, but I think that's everything. Anyway, I I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more power profile videos like this in the future, do be sure to like and subscribe. Also be sure to comment down below your own thoughts, whether you disagree on how I did something, or if you think there's something I missed, or anything else really. But that's everything from me, so with that, have a good one and take care.